Updates on the American women. Last month on Wide World, we brought you the dramatic story of American Kim Zamaskal, who won the women's all-around title at the World Gymnastics Championships. Today, it's the men's all-around, which was also recorded last September. Here's Gary Bender and Bart Connor. Indianapolis is the site of the largest and most important competition in gymnastics, the home of the 1991 World Gymnastics Championships. As today, from inside the Hoosier Dome, we bring you the men's individual all-around competition. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. Welcome to our coverage of the men's all-around finals. The top 36 qualifiers, limited to three to each country, competing in six events. Working with me, two-time Olympic gold medalist Bart Conner. And Bart, to no one's surprise, the Soviets had the top three qualifiers. And Gary, as a matter of fact, the Soviet team is so deep that Igor Kodobchinsky, the current world all-around champion, he's not even in the all-around finals today. He made a mistake in the earlier session. Now, let's pick two Soviets to watch for. Vitaly Sherbo is the Goodwill Games all-around champion, and he is spectacular, as well as Valerie Liukin. Now, Liukin was the first gymnast in the history of the sport to perform a triple back somersault on floor exercise. We'll see that today. The top qualifier for the United States, Scott Keswick. And Scott has had a brilliant competition all week long, but keep in mind, no scores carry over from the preliminary competition. He opens on the pommel horse. He'll have to be consistent there if he hopes to place well. Bart, this is like a six-ring circus out here. It is going to be wild. All six events going on at the same time. We have the floor exercise, the pommel horse, the still rings, the vault, the parallel bars, and the high bar. Okay, let's go to the first rotation. We begin our coverage with Grigory Mizutin one of the top young gymnasts in the Soviet Union, as he's on the ring. Miss Newton has improved a great deal on this event because he's much stronger than he was a year ago. You can see he opens with a move called an Azarian. It's a back roll to an iron cross, but this is the most impressive strength move coming up right here. He goes to a plange, he holds the plange, and then presses out of the plange up to a handstand. That takes immense strength. Now keep in mind that the gymnasts have to show a press to a handstand, as Ms. Newton just did, as well as a swing to handstand, as you saw just there. Showing good control of the rings, he has a very big dismount, and what a landing. He has improved so quickly. He was an alternate on the Soviet team two years ago in the 89 World Championships. And Soviet coach Leonid Arkaya really likes this young man because he said not only does he work hard, but he's very modest. This move here is called a Yamawaki, which is a double front within the rings invented by a Japanese gymnast. Very impressive that he freezes the handstand coming out of that. Here's an unusual angle of the dismount, a double back with a full twist to a great landing. Ms. Yuten, a score of 9-8-2-5. This is Vitaly Shirbo of the Soviet Union, considered by many to be the Soviet's new star. In terms of personality, Shirbo is exactly the opposite of Miss Newton. He's very outgoing. He's considered the Soviet team clown. And you can see it in his gymnastics. He's very exciting, very aggressive. Moving very quickly through the routine. Beautiful back toss right to a handstand. Oh, and a strong dismount. Sherbo's off to a good start. Sherbo was the all-around gold medalist of the Goodwill Games that were held in Seattle. It seems like every year the Soviets bring a new champion onto the scene. Sherbo was the star last year, and he still has immense potential. Well, Germany now competing as a unified country, and this is Andreas Becker. He is from Berlin, and he's ready to go now on the ring. Interesting note that the unified team of Germans consisted of no West Germans. All of the team were former East German competitors. The only West German member was the alternate on the team. Becker shows some very impressive strength work right at the beginning of his routine. A very difficult sequence coming up right here from the handstand. He goes to an inverted iron cross presses back to the handstand to a move called a Maltese cross down to an iron cross. Notice how the rings are perfectly steady. Now 
he begins with the swing elements of his routine. That was called a shoot to a handstand. Front giant swing. Very solid. Here comes a huge dismount, a double back with two twists. Wow. Shirbo, by the way, on the parallel bars at a 9775. And Becker's off to a terrific start. That was his best event. And he is off to a good start, Bart. He's tied for first after the first rotation, a 9825 with Grigory Mizutin. And then Vitaly Shirbo, also from the Soviet Union, is in third with a 9775. We'll be back with a second rotation in just a moment. He has really looked awesome in practice all week long. I think he's the most prepared of the Soviets here. He changed his high bar routine a little bit. He used to do a release move there in the beginning, and he has moved things around. There is an excellent reverse hex from one arm, but here's the new move. It's a reverse hex in the laid out position. Beautifully done. We mentioned the tap swing. Watch the bottom of the swing and notice the arch and the pike position as he sets up for the dismount. Well done. Both of his parents coached tumbling and acrobatics. Mother got him started in the sport. He's the only child as we look at the replay. Let's watch for the tap swing. Notice he pikes and he arches on the backside. The bar flexes and slingshots him back across in the reverse act. Good mechanics. And the score for Shirbo, a 9-8-5. Next up, Yuri Keki of Italy. He made a name for himself in the rings. He won the bronze medal at the 89 World Championships. This is unquestionably Keki's best event, but he is a very complete gymnast, strong on all six apparatus. But what's most impressive is how he swings to strength moves. Watch this. From the inverted cross, he swings and then freezes it in a Maltese cross. That's tough. So intense, always has excellent form, tight body line, that's so important, especially on the rings. Strong finish. Yuri Kecki of Italy. Italy has never won a gold medal in the World Championships. This is Scott Keswick, one of the major surprises at these World Championships. Bart talked to him about why his confidence level is so high at this point. I think confidence was the one thing I was lacking for the past three or four years. I finally realized that I could be the best gymnast in the United States and uh, very competitive worldwide. And I think that's helped me a great deal, especially this year. I've had a great deal of success, and I think confidence has been a big key to that. Keswick moving to the rings. We have a score now on Keki, a 9-8-5. Scott from Las Vegas. Scott's been known as the king of the rings on the United States team. He's won the U.S. national title three years in a row. We mentioned at the top of the show that he needed to get off to a strong start on his first event, which was the pommel horse. He was a little shaky there, had only a 9-4-2-5. So he'll need to pull it up here, and if he can do it in any event, it's here on the rings. This is his best. this dismount it's a double back with two twists great scott is a senior at ucla majoring in applied math and economics valerie liukin of the soviet union one of the most exciting gymnasts of his era 24 years old he really is a favorite among all the gymnasts here because he does the wildest routines with the biggest tricks he has two huge release moves in this exercise. He doesn't seem to care about consistency. He just goes as high and as far as he can on all of his moves. Watch this one coming up here. It's going to be a front flip with a full turn to a regrass. Beautiful. He's going to do a triple back for a dismount. One of the few in the world that can do it with good form. Great landing. Looks like he's hurt himself. Yeah, you know, I watched in the practice the warm-up session right before he competed here, and he jammed his ankle on the triple back just in the warm-up. 
A lot of pressure coming down when you're about 15 feet in the air. We'll see if that's going to affect him the rest of the competition. Remember, he has to go on the floor exercise next, and that's where he does his triple backflip. Liukin with a score of 9-9, so he is tied for first after two rotations with Vitaly Shirbo. Yuri Kaki is tied for third with Mizutin, and Scott Keswick, who scored a 9-7-0-0 12th. As we pick up the competition, we'll return with a third rotation. $24.98 plus $3 shipping. On the outskirts of Moscow is a nondescript building that shows the signs of the crumbling Soviet Union. But this building has been a factory for the world's premier gymnasts. The Soviet National Training Center has drawn together the finest young gymnasts from the talent-rich Soviet program, many of whom were filtered into special schools as early as age six. The Soviets dominated international gymnastics through the 1980s, a level of excellence that was built on hard work, discipline, and fierce competition within the team, all achieved under the watchful eye of coach Leonid Arkayev. The Soviet men spend three weeks of each month at the training center, but as you can see here, their days are not devoid of recreation. And Bart, my question is, how can you play with all white cue balls? That's a good point, Gary. Every time you hit one in at the scratch, you have to take one out. Makes for a long game, doesn't it? We pick up the competition now. This is Vitaly Shirbo, who's tied for first after two rotations, ready for the floor exercise. Watch this opening tumbling run. He's one of the few people in the world that can do it. Double back with two twists. He shows an awesome combination of great mechanics as well as power. We were talking to the Soviet coach Arkayev about Sherbo. And he said that he's such a talent that he learns the difficult elements very quickly. And he said sometimes that leads to overconfidence. And he's a little worried that uh, perhaps he's just a little too arrogant. But his style is very impressive because he does know how to show off what he can do to the judges. Okay, now as he fulfills the balance requirement, you heard the bell in the background. That signals that he has 20 seconds in which to complete the exercise. His last run, a laid out double back. What difficult. From Minsk, Belorussia, 19 years old, Shirbo of the Soviet Union. While Shirbo was competing on the floor exercise, a moment ago, Li Jing competed on the high bar. He's the most accomplished member of the Chinese team. Let's visit him in Beijing. In a land of rich traditions, centuries old, the revolutionary leader, Mao Zedong, introduced a new tradition, physical fitness for all. Li Jing is a true product of modern Chinese society, one still very much in touch with its ancient past. When I was young, my physical constitution was not very good. My parents want me to be stronger, so I started with gymnastics. It requires many elements, mainly good physical constitution, but also the brain. You have to understand yourself to succeed. Li Jing spends most of his time at the National Training Center a long ways from his parents and two brothers in Hunan province. On Sunday, his day off from training, Li Jing enjoys a little shopping in the free markets around Beijing, something else that's relatively new in China. Now let's go back and watch Li Jing's performance on the high bar. Li Jing has always been well known for his high level of difficulty, but most important, is his execution. Watch the body line and the clean form. This is his first release move. It's called a Gaylord, invented by Mitch Gaylord. In a little close. There's a combination of two release moves, a reverse hex. For the second one, whoa! You can see he was just a little too far out. No way to regrasp the bar. Gary, we talked about the importance of the tap. What happens here, he does the reverse hex and his tap happens just too early. And because of that, it slingshots him forward and he can't get back to the bar. Li Jing did get up, complete the performance. He was given a 9-1-7-5.
This is Valerie Liukin of the Soviet Union. Shirbo scored a 9, 8 5 oh, so he's got to match it. Here comes the triple. He made it. It's amazing, too, because remember on the high bar, he had a sore ankle after that triple back dismount. It's amazing that he has the power in his legs and the power in the takeoff, considering he's limping on a sore ankle. Flair work up to handstand. There's a press to a handstand. Oh! I can't believe he walked in the handstand. A very basic move and a critical mistake. It's ironic that he made the triple but blew a simple handstand. That's going to cost him. His last tumbling run should be a double back with a full twist. Oh, yeah. A little shaky on that landing once again. Oh, and you can see that his ankle is certainly bothering him. It's amazing he can tumble at all, let alone do a triple backflip. Liukin was the first gymnast in the world to perform the triple backflip back in 88. And now watch the mechanics of this move. The first flip happens on the way up. The second flip stays right at the top, and the third flip happens on the way down. And boy, does that thing drop fast. Liukin scores a 9-6-7-5. That drops him to third. Shirbo now in first. Mizutin in second. Scott Keswick of the United States in 11th. We'll be back with more from Indianapolis later on. Frank Giffrey once again from New York. We'll have more gymnastics shortly. It's still ahead. We now continue with the World Gymnastics Championships, featuring the men's all-around. Welcome back to the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis for the men's all-around competition at the 1991 World Gymnastics Championships. While we were away, we completed the fourth rotation. Let's go back now to the fourth rotation and watch Grigory Mizutin of the Soviet Union on the high bar. He opens with a very big move. Invented by Mitch Gaylord from the U.S. team. It's a double front over the bar. It's called a Gaylord one. Here it is. Oh, nice. Watch how fast he swings. Beautiful height on that release move. He's so much more assertive. It's like his confidence is building as the day goes along. He really is aggressive here. He'll do a triple for a dismount. There it is. Ooh, this guy's having a great day. His shooting score on the high bar was a 9-9 to put him in the lead. Then here on the fifth rotation, his shooting was able to hold that lead as he scored another 9-9 on the floor exercise. After five rotations, they have Musutin in front, followed by Vitaly Shirbo and Valerie Liukin. Scott Keswick of the United States has moved up to seventh place. Sixth and final rotation, Scott Keswick comes in seventh. He has a chance now to have the best finish since you were performing back in 79. You finished fifth, and Kurt Thomas finished second. And in the race for the all-around title, the gold will be between Musutin and Shirbo. Sherbo is second behind Miss Hewton by less than a tenth of a point. He's going to the vault where he got a 10 last year to win the Goodwill game. So he could take over right here. Miss Hewton, a surprising first place right now as he comes up on the pommel horse. He is a surprise in first place. All three Soviets have held the lead at one point during the competition today. This is not his best event. He has what I would call a stock routine. Certainly he has enough difficulty, but nothing that really dazzles him. Good combination on one pommel. Clean work up to a handstand. That's going to score well, although there's nothing really spectacular in that routine. It has all the requirements. Here's a good look at the body position. He doesn't have the elevation from some of the other gymnasts that we have seen, like Li Jing and... Chris Waller from the U.S. team, but this is the best combination. He goes around three times on one pommel in a move called a back more, where his hands are behind his back. Is Hutton with a 9-8.
So now the man that's fine for first with him, his fellow countryman Shearbo, will go to the vault. He needs a 9-9 here to win. It's going to be tough to get a big score here. The scores have been low on vaulting, but wait till you see this vault. <laughs> he didn't stick the landing, but was that spectacular in the air? That style of vaulting is the round-off approach vault. He does it with a double twist. Look at how high he is. I don't think he's going to get the 9-9, though. Well, you're right, Bart. He didn't. He got a 9-7-7-5. That means Ms. Hutton has won the gold, and that brings us to Scott Kenswood. Now, he needs a 9-7-5 to finish in the top five. Keswick has a very impressive mount. It's a laid-out double backflip. Oh, just a little short on that landing. Keep in mind that Sherbo used that same move, but with two more twists. Much more difficulty. There's an impressive tumbling run. Beautiful flares up to a handstand. The same move we saw from many of the gymnasts. In particular, Ryukin did it very well. What a great day for this young man. He's had a terrific competition. Certainly showing to the world that the Americans are back to compete on a world scale. It's because of his high level of difficulty that he's actually getting noticed here. He has clean form and good mechanics, but it's the big tricks that are really gaining him the attention. Last run. Double backflip. Oh, just a little short again. Same as the mount. Still a terrific day for this young man. 21-year-old Scott Keswick. He was second in the 1991 NCAAs in the all-around. We'll be back with his score and the final standings when we return to the Hoosier Dome. All-around final, Grigori Mizutin with the gold. Vitaly Shirbo with the silver. Valerie Liukin with the bronze. For the United States, Scott Keswick tied for 10th. Jared Hanks, 16th, and Chris Waller, 20th. And this is really the first time since 1983 that the U.S. team is heading into the Olympics on a positive note. The U.S. has hovered somewhere between 8th and 11th in the world. They were 5th here, and with the talent of people like Jared Hanks and Chris Waller and a healthy Lance Rignald, things could look pretty good in 92. But the big story for the United States, Scott Keswick, tied for 10th. That's the best showing by a U.S. male since 1983 when Mitch Gaylord finished 8th. And now with Scott... Here's Mark Connor. Thank you, Gary. And Scott, uh, a wonderful performance for you tonight. You said before the competition that you were going to have to contain yourself and not overpower things. It obviously worked. Yeah, that, that was my game plan from the beginning. I wanted to get a good start on Palm Horse and just maintain my focus and keep control of my excitement and my energy. And I think I did a good job of that. Now, you've been a lover and a student of gymnastics for many years. What's it like to be out there on the floor with the world's best and know you're among them now? Uh, it's a great feeling. I think it's going to be a breakthrough meet for me. It's going to help my confidence in the next year and hopefully more success will come. Congratulations. Thank you. Gregory Mizutin's gold medal in the all-around is the eighth consecutive at the world championships for the Soviet Union. But now one has to wonder if we'll ever see this flag again. Well, of course, the Soviet Union has been dissolved, ending an era of dominance. Over 40 years, the Soviets won 110 gold medals at the World Championships. The U.S., by contrast, has won only six. Next, we'll go to...